I, sorry, to a left one and down three. Reflection about the x-axis. Let's talk about the reflection now. With reflection, we could have a green function that kind of looks like this, but we want to reflect it around the x-axis. So this is the x-axis, and we're reflecting things around it, meaning that where there used to be a point on the function right here, it will now land down here. Where there used to be a point right here, it will now reflect across the x-axis down here, and so on. So for instance, if I had a, I'm going to draw a weird picture, just to talk about reflection. If I had something like, I don't know, let's say 3. And let's say the 3 was located right here, right? Is that a 3? Did I do a 3 correctly? For some reason, it doesn't look like a 3. Is that a 3? Oh, that's a 3. Wow, I cannot draw 3s anymore. Anyways, let's say this is an upside down 3, right? Then if you're going to reflect around the x-axis, the, the uh, 3 will now look like a 3 like this. So this point is going to be down here and so on. Come on, draw. I'm already going through enough in life. Alrighty, there we go. Bam. So everything, this point will look is down here now, this point is down here now. This is reflecting around the x-axis. Now if I was to reflect around the y-axis, so let's say I want to reflect this guy around the y-axis now, then it would look something like, might as well since I'm already here. Uh, then this is the y-axis. This point is now right here. This point is now like right here. And again, I used like as if, I don't know, I really need to better myself. And then we can start at three. Bam, I'm trying my best. I'm trying my best. Alrighty, there we go. So, uh, we have, for some reason, I picked the same color again. I do not like that. I, I kind of want it to be a different color. There we go. Alrighty, so this is rotating around the x-axis, going downwards this way, and then going towards the y-axis, we are rotating that way. Whoa, come on. That way. And the reason why we say it is because this is the y-axis, so we kind of go across the y-axis. Alrighty, that being said, let's move on. This is our reflection on the x-axis. So we're moving, uh, so this point is now located down there. And how do we know we're going to reflect around the x-axis? That's if we, are, if we put a negative in front of the entire function, right, just like we did right here, then there will be a, there will be a reflection around the x-axis. However, if you have a negative within the function, so not on the outside around the all of the function, but instead it's right inside the parentheses right next to the x, the x alone. That's a reflection around the y-axis, so you can tell how the point used to be right here, now it's right there. The point used to be right here, now it's right there. The point used to be right here, now it's right there, and so on. The point used to be right here, now it's right there. So you can see how the reflection is across the y-axis, just like I explained before. So a reflection around the y-axis. If there's a negative inside of x, that will be a reflection. And now that we talked about reflection, let's talk about stretching and shrinking graphs. So over here we may have a function and we may want to stretch it or shrink it. We're just going to talk about stretching and shrinking vertically. There is a also, there, there's also a horizontal stretch and um, compression, but we're just going to stick to vertically. The, the horizontally is virtually the same thing. So let's say we have a function, and let's say we have two situations. Let's say we have a function where there's a c up front, the function, right? There's a constant in front of it. The constant is bigger than 1, meaning it could be a 2, a 3, a 7, or a 1.000001. When that happens, we are stretching vertically, meaning that if we are having a parabola like this, then it will be stretched vertically, meaning the blue one. It's pretty much, uh, uh, if this guy was going upwards at a slow pace, and all of a sudden it's going upwards at a fast pace. So at 1, where it used to be at, uh, at x equals 1, when it used to go up 1, now it goes up 2. If, if I wanted my bank account to increase in number, I would like it to have a vertical stretch, right? So that pretty much causes, imagine a hand pulling the blue graph upwards, and now it's being stretched. Now, on the other hand, imagine we have a constant that's between 0 and 1. Well, if we have a constant between 0 and 1, 
then it would be a vertical compression. Over here they call it shrunk. But I, I like using the word compression. I think there's just something about that word that really uh, puts a magic touch to it. Uh, besides the point, um, imagine how um, when, when you have when you look at the original function, imagine a let me say it like this: imagine a muffin, right? And that's your f of x. Then if you if you put a constant bigger than one in front of that f of x, imagine you smushing that muffin down, smush it. And when you do that, same thing really happens uh, horizontally. It will uh, go outwards. It will become fat. It will become really fat because you smushed the muffin for a reason. You wanted to eat it, didn't you? Anyways, so um, once once you once you have a number be, uh, between zero and one, that could be numbers like four over five, seven over eight, nineteen over two thousand. These numbers are all between zero and one and they will cause your function to vertically uh, compress. So let's do a few examples. I know, be, I know you really want me to do a few, so let's do a few. So over here we have a parent function that looks like x cubed, but we have a function that will go through a vertical, horizontal uh, um, transformation. What was it called? A shift, shifting, a vertical shift, horizontal shift, and it will stretch vertically by a factor of 5, meaning it's going to go upwards faster. Uh, when it used to just go upwards by 1, now it goes upwards 5. When it used to go upwards 9, now it goes upwards 45. So it really it, it goes upwards much faster. So let's do this example. Uh, file, new, do not save it, and let's draw this out. g of x equals, let's do this quickly, 5 and then x plus 3 cube minus y. So let's look at this. We have our little x and y axis. And I, I fail to label these axes because I'm guessing you know how to, you know which one's x and which, one, which one's y. We will move to the, let's go like this, we will move downwards 4, so 1, 2, 3, 4, create our imaginary axes, and then we will move to the right, to the left 3, 1, 2, 3, create a vertical axis. Look at that. That looks beautiful. And we, are, we can... Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't even do the parent graph yet. My bad. I, was, I went ahead of my... Um, ahead, of, ahead of the things I was supposed to do. So the parent function looks something like this. Beautiful. And then something like this. Oh, that looks good. That looks so good. Alrighty. I'm so happy. I'm... Nothing can bring me down at this point. Ooh, look at how I can adjust it this way. Okay, let's go with this. So we, we just um, create our parent, parent function, and let's create just these transformations, this one and this one. That's all I'm going to do. So pretty much do the same thing, but do it down here. Uh, come on, come on, come on. Do it good, do it good, do it good. Nice. And then let's do it again. We got this. I'm on fire. And then let's go a little bit down this way, maybe over here. No, that, that looks the same. Let's go. Oh, that looks way the same. Let's go with, I don't know. I'm just experimenting right now. Come on, give me some good. Green. I like this. Now, we took care of the uh, horizontal vertical shifts. Let's worry about the stretching now. So when it used to go like this, now we're going to go further five times faster. So imagine going something like this. And again, these are all uh, rough drafts, pretty much. I try my best to make it look nice, but um, if, you, if you're just beginning, you may want to create an x and y axis. You know that you move to the, on the x axis, left 3. So you may want to start with negative 3, because that's where your center is revolving around. And then do negative 2, and then negative 1, and then negative 4, and negative 5. Plug these values in. Uh, this one would give you, what would that give you? That would give you negative 4. You plug that in there, you will get 1. You plug this in there, um, the negative 1, you'll get 8, 40, um, 36. 36, over here you would get the same numbers. No, you wouldn't. Uh, negative 4 will give you negative 1. Negative 1 uh, cubed, this is negative 1. Negative 5. And um, 
at negative 9. I'm guessing the numbers would be identical except um, you're adding, uh, um, you would add, that's besides the point. I think you pretty much just put like, you add like negative uh, 8 because when, when you had positive values, you would subtract 8. Now you're getting negative values. So pretty much not only are you not subtracting 4, but you're adding 4. So that's why you kind of added, uh, you made it negative. So this one right here, I'm guessing, I'm predicting right now, would end up being uh, this, uh, negative 36 plus negative h, which is negative 44. But I'm a cautious person, let's just check it out. Uh, negative 5, negative 2 squared times 2 to the 3 power, negative 8, negative 40, negative 44. I was right. Anyways, and then you can like graph these points just to impress Mr. S, but these are just pretty much rough graphs. So horizontal shift, vertical shift, stretching by a factor of 5. Bam, bam. Alrighty, another example, and then we will call the day. And then Mr. S will have, will do this example for you. You know why? Because he cares. Look at this. 3 over 7 times, inside the parentheses, this disgusting uh, coefficient. And then minus 1 fourth, and then we do, I will do this for you, you know. But you know, you should, I feel some, sometimes you should bring Mr. S an apple or something, because he's really going through stuff, and he would he would really appreciate it. But if you don't want to buy an apple, that's fine, you know, it's, it's, it's not a must. Unless you want me to like you. Alrighty, let's go. I should say I'm just kidding, but am I? That's the question. Negative. I am kidding. I don't want to get fired. I think my principal is watching my videos. I want to say his name. I'll, I'll ask him if I'm allowed to say his name. Make him famous. Make him famous in front of the 12 people who watch my videos. Alrighty, so um, over here, we have a horizontal stretch, and now I have set you up for a trap because you would assume we are we are shifting to the left nine. However, you don't. Here's why. What I need you to do is I need you to factor out a negative three because that's the number that's in front of x. So you get x minus three. And that is cubed and then minus four. Let me let me just tell you what I did. I cannot just do a horizontal shift of 9 because in front of x there's a number. In order to fix that, I need to factor out whatever that number is, which I did right here. So negative 3. You factor out negative 3, now you have x by itself. So the, your horizontal shift is expressed right here. So we are shifting, let me use a different color. We are shifting um, 4 down and we're shifting to the right, not to the left, 3 and not 9. And what are we going to do with this? I mean, if you know your exponent rules, you pretty much know that it would go some like negative 3 to the 3 power, and then x minus 3 to the 3 power, and then minus 4, which would give us negative 27, and then x minus 3 cubed minus 4. And then you pretty much have this looking much nicer and much better to deal with. So just do it, you know. If you have something that looks like this, fact out that negative 3. Do yourself a favor. Alrighty, so let's get this started. Let's do our shifts. Let's do our parent function first, actually. Our parent, parent function would, look, would be located 3 to the right. Oh no, I'm sorry. Our parent function looks like this. There we go. That's our parent function. Now, Our function will be, be moved to the right three. So one, two, three, and we'll be moved down four. One, two, three, four. Create this imaginary axis. Wow, that looks terrible. And then imagine this imaginary axis. Create this imaginary axis. Come on. Alrighty. And then you redraw the function one more time. Let's do this. Just like we did before. Same exact way. Look at that. That's looking so good. So we got this figured out. Now here's the issue we have. So we, I took care of this guy. I took care of this guy. So imagine my, this is my function. But all I really have to worry about is that negative 27 and uh, x cubed. Right? I don't have these numbers anymore because I took care of them by moving this imaginary axis down and to the right. Now here's two things. One, we are stretching this function vertically 
by 27. That is huge. That is like amazingly fast. But not only are we doing this, we are putting a negative on the outside. That is a vertical, vertical flip. We are flipping this function around the x-axis. So pretty much um, it used to look like this, but now it's going to look like this. So let me use a different color. So that flip will look like that. And come on, do a better job. Do a better job. You just said, there we go. There we go. That looks good. That's a flip. That's the negative right here. That's taking care of the negative. So the last thing I really have to do, now that I flipped it vertically, because they're negative, I need to stretch it by 27. And that is going to be some stretch. That is an amazing stretch right here. That's going to be impressive. Um, so it looks like this, but I am going to really have to stretch it like a lot. Like some like this. Like I'm trying. That's probably not even stretched enough. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I was supposed to stretch it a lot more. I mean, who knows? I mean, use a graphing calculator and graph it, or use your little x and y table. But my students do not have to use x, y tables. They just simply have to show me that they understand that um, the function is moved to the right, moved down. It is flipped function, and also you stretched it. So I'm, I made, I made a good, I did a good job showing you that I stretched this function. Alrighty, that is it for today. I'm pretty sure this video was way longer than I wanted it to be. The next video is just a single problem video. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do this problem. I'm gonna analyze it, and um, that is it. You guys have a fantastic day, and I will see you tomorrow.